Well, the release of the video of Donald Trump discussing groping women has raised new questions about Trump's persecution of the Central Park Five, a group of black and Latino teens who were wrongfully convicted of raping a female jogger in Central Park 25 years ago. Media coverage at the time portrayed them as guilty and used racially coded terms to describe them. Donald Trump took out full-page ads in four city newspapers, calling for the reinstatement of the death penalty so they could be executed. Their convictions were vacated in 2002, when the real rapist came forward and confessed, after the five had already served jail terms of up to 13 years. In 2014, a federal judge approved a $41 million settlement for the group, with each of the five receiving around $1 million for each year they were wrongfully imprisoned. So I'd like to ask you— uh, uh, And we have a clip. We have a clip right now of—is it uh, Raymond Santana, who is one of the Central Park Five? I tried to get my life back together and uh, and put one foot in front of the other, but I didn't, you know, I didn't realize the social death that we were given as a sentence. Now, I want to read from The Washington Post. This past week, when confronted again with just how wrong he was about the Central Park Five, you know, taking out these full-page ads calling for the, them to get the death penalty, Trump not only refused to acknowledge widely reported and well-known facts of the court's official actions in the case, he did not simply refuse to apologize. He described the men as guilty. Again, I'm reading from The Washington Post, and then demonstrated once again again that he's a master at the dark art of using long-standing racial fears, stereotypes and anxieties to advance his personal and political goals. Uh, Professor Crenshaw, um, can you talk about this coming at the same time, like a day before the video was released? A day before. Yeah, so, so I think this is the crux of the matter. Um, it is abundantly clear that this is a moment in which uh, rape culture is being explored and for once at the center of the conversation. But the reality is that this is not just a product of rape culture. It's a racist rape culture. And it's a racist rape culture, obviously, for a couple reasons. Number one, um, it is abundantly clear that no African-American candidate would have been viable if he'd had the track record that Donald Trump had, if he had said he owned women in a beauty pageant, if he had uh, talked about his anatomy, if he had uh, talked about the attractiveness of his daughter or having sex with his wives, he would not have been palatable. So, number one, these are not just rantings of a sexist or a chauvinist or elitist playboy. This has whiteness at the core of an exercise uh, of ability to do these things. Then you add to that this story from last week, which basically hasn't gotten the attention it deserves. So, effectively, uh, five uh, young uh, men of color might well have been executed for something that they did not do if Donald Trump had had his way. Rather than seeing this as a moment to reflect along the lines that he said in his apology, he's grown, he's learned, he's seen new things, rather than walking that back, he doubles down on the idea that these young men should have uh, actually uh, perhaps uh, confronted the death penalty, even after the criminal justice system, as it rarely does, acknowledges that it was an illegitimate conviction. So, it's it's this tried-and-true idea that we've seen many, many times before, uh, from the Scottsboro Boys, nine young men who themselves uh, faced possible death by uh, an illegitimate prosecution, all the way to today, the idea being that, don't look at what I do, uh, my sexual predatory behavior is for me to do, but for men of color across history, they are the ones that carry the burden of the idea of being the rapist. So it's, it's about rape culture. And of course, the last thing that we cannot forget is that women and girls of color who are sexually abused never come into Donald Trump's framework of those who he wants to defend. The very week that the Central Park jogger was raped, 28 other women were raped, most of them women of color. One was thrown down an elevator shaft. 
the resources and attention that he could have directed to making women safe ends up being an expression of bloodlust. That's a part of our history that many of us thought that we had gotten away from until Donald Trump ran for president. Well, I want to thank you very much for being with us, Kimberly Crenshaw, professor of law at UCLA and Columbia University, founder of the African American Policy Forum and a V-Day board member. I also want to thank uh, Soraya Chamali, who is the journalist who covered the intersection of gender and politics, speaking to us from Washington, D.C. Professor Crenshaw was in Los Angeles. In